Hello, everyone in the world, all the Dream Theater fans. We're hanging out today. Um, it's just happening. We're in Bonn. We're just having a good time. We're all set up. We're ready to play. I was peering out the window, watching the fans, just kind of like running in. That was kind of fun. And uh, just doing our usual thing. We're in the production office now, and uh, it's just another day on the road. Doing the thing. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> in Germany. This is James LeBray from Dream Theater. We're here in Bonn today. It's been a very kind of bizarre day. It's raining and it's getting some raining and getting some. So hopefully the skies will stay clear for tonight. We're playing in a beautiful outdoor venue, a museum beside us, and uh, it's going to be great. So hopefully we will see you down the road on tour. Come to the show and let's have a great time together. Peace. You know, it's not unlike other Dream Theater albums where, you know, you always got to have a diversity uh, in our music and, uh, you know, it's eclectic in its styles. I think the difference being that, uh, the noticeable difference is the way that those styles intertwine. They interact with one another in a very balanced sense. Uh, you know, everything is, I mean, there's always, uh, you know, people find, uh, how do you guys keep track of what you're doing? Because it's so out there and so crazy at times, but believe it or not, there is a method to the madness. You know, there is a purpose for each and every section. There is a reason why they appear like they do and, they, um, and the compositions, the arrangements are set up the way that they are. Because that's, that's dream theater and that's what's created our identity and our sound. Um, to me, it's, it's you know, uh, I love the album, it's exciting, I mean, I'm, it's bias, you know, opinion, but I think I can be objective in the sense that I find there's a really nice um, uh, unfolding of the songs throughout the album, and uh, I think that it maintains a really good balance with the way that the styles are brought in together, and uh, like I said earlier, how they intertwine with one another, which makes the album really exciting and powerful. The writing process was slightly different. I mean, in previous albums, we've had it where, you know, there'll be an idea or a conversation of what direction we think we should go in. There might be some ideas floating around, riffs and, you know, little music ideas that way. Um, this one was more or less like, you know, let's just go in to the room as a band and see what comes out. What's inspiring us at that particular moment? What's in us that you know, is wanting to, you know, be conveyed or be communicated to us in music. And so it was very, very organic. It wasn't, you know, any preconceived ideas or direction or directions uh, to which, which we thought we needed to achieve. So, you know, once the seeds were planted and we were in the studio the first day just jamming out ideas and riffs and everything like that, once we thought that we were getting on to something, that basically was the template for where we thought that the album will continue to go and it kind of set everything else in motion as to what created the rest of the album musically. Well, I mean, my participation is, you know, that I am there, I'm, with, I'm in the room during the whole process and um, if I hear something, then I'll say something. If I hear something I like, you know, I'll say, that's very cool, it's, you know, that's, that's very cool, let's stay with that. If I hear something I don't like, I say it. Mm -hmm. You know, what we do is at the end of every day we'll, we'll make copies and we can sit with them and listen to them back in our hotel rooms or whatever. And, you know, there'll be some days where I'll come in, you know, that section after the bridge or the C section or whatever, it's not, it's not hitting me, it's, I don't like it or whatever, or, you know what, it's really cool, it's really exciting, it'd be great to expand on. So that's my involvement, you know, in that sense. Um, and then obviously when it comes to melodies and lyrical contributions. It was um, from literature that I read. Um, I read a book called uh, Politics of Truth. It was written by Joseph Wilson, who was once an ambassador with, um, for the United States in Nigeria and Iraq. And it was this whole telling of the fact that, you know, the public really doesn't see what goes on behind closed doors and that 
the government and the powers that be, the few that are in those positions, um, have uh, ulterior you know, motives and they have their own agenda. Okay. And through politics, a lot of politics is based on profit, you know, financial gain and uh, being able to have the power over resources and regions that can make that country richer and uh, sit in a better, better situation. Um, globally. Um, so it was his telling of, you know, um, this whole war in Iraq was basically, basically based on lies and, and, you know, it wasn't necessary and it wasn't imperative that we went there because there was a threat, an imminent threat to the United States or anything like that. So I loosely took that information and then the way that I, I uh, displayed it was the way I did with Sacrifice Son. I liked to stay neutral. Sacrifice Son was about the fact that we misunderstand each other and we resort to violence. Prophets of War is the prophets, the politicians that tell us we need to do things. It's not really so. It's a play on words. It's prophets, but they're profiting okay. from their agendas. So basically I kept it very uh, middle of the road. I didn't want to say I'm, I'm a voice for this side or for this side. And it all comes down to, once again, we're doing things and we think that we can resolve or shed light on a situation and make a situation better by resorting to violence and fight and arms and all that, which is ludicrous. It's, it's absolutely asinine today that we still think that we can resolve our differences and our ignorance through conflict. It's not going to happen. It's not going to change anything. It, it leaves resentment and hatred and um, uh, vengeance within people. And uh, it's just, it's barbaric that we still choose to create situations of like that. me it was hurting. The give yourself was good. The, the, uh, I mean, everything was good except the give, your, the give yourself and the me. So. The song too was good. What the fuck was that? You should have just said do it again. No, it's, it's good. We can comp that. Do another one. Just the, the My dad's got a gnarly set of tools. We can fix it. <laughs> yeah, try another. Yeah, what he meant was, apart from the phrasing and the pitch, it was perfect. Oh, the tone could have been better. Actually, the delivery wasn't yeah, so yeah. great either. Okay. What was Guys, do you have any other compliments? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Let's go. We do that to each other in the studio. You know, like, we'll, we'll like, uh, try and like, dig each other, see if we can get each other. But at the same time, too, there is, a, there is a purpose behind it because we want to see how far we can push one another okay. and what we can get out of one another. Is there something better in you? I think there is. And we know each other well enough now to know that we are able to say anything we want to one another without us getting, you know, our back up and becoming defensive and everything. So, like, you're probably seeing a moment there where he's going, ah, you know what? I think you can do this better, or whatever, can you re-sing that? And so that happens in the studio, or you know, the same thing might be said to Jordan when he's laying down his keyboards, or whoever it might be that's, that's, that's tracking at that particular moment. That kind of communication goes on. And it's just so that we can see and make damn sure that we're getting the best out of each person. Okay. While we're hard at work, the Canadian is perfecting his game of basketball. I thought you should be playing hockey. Nope, basketball. Whoa, and he actually made it. Whoa, I'm very impressed. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I like to do that, and, um, and we'll go skating, ice skating, we'll do stuff like that, you know, and rollerblading in the summer, and you know, I mean, I think it's good to just stay active too. That's you know, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it is a new chapter for us, you know, with the new label and this tour. And even though this is this is mainly focused on the festivals, um, you know, like it's we're also doing our headline shows in between, and right. it's really been a great reception. Even the festivals have been fantastic. You know, we did download right. for the first time; and it was unbelievable. The reception we got was incredible. But I mean, you know, we're going out there and we're saying, you know, we got to really. This is, this is something new for us. Let's get out there and, and kick some butt, okay. basically. And we've been doing it each and every night, whether we're headlining or whether we're on a festival. And I think it's really proving itself. It's letting everybody see that, you know, we're back and we're back.